Yo, what's good, everybody? It's your boy Zilla Jackson back with another video. Let's get it. Well, I'm so sorry I've been gone for so long. I have been sick. One and two. Some things have been coming up. Uh, recently, I just lost my voice, but I do apologize about that. Um, I do appreciate all you guys that are going to the Twitch and following. But let's go ahead and get back into the video. Uh, so, we are going to react to a video by Patrick CC, and this video is called How Habula Success, Got His Success, right? So, with that said, let's go ahead and get right into the video, and I am going to give what I, I'm going to give what my thoughts and, and ideas are on the situation, but... Let me let me know if I'm going overboard or not. So let's go ahead and get right into the video. Yeah. Hezbollah is a 20 year old, 3 foot 3 inch internet sensation that seemingly rose to superstardom overnight. His hilarious viral videos have gotten him famous all over the world. Today, he has over 8 million followers on Instagram and just secured a massive contract with the UFC. Hezbollah is humble, but he is no fool. He knew exactly the right people he needed to become friends with to accelerate to the next level of fame. He left some old friends in the dust and made new friends in high places. There has been a lot of suspicion surrounding his fame, coming from a tiny village in Russia to meetings with royalty. How exactly did Hezbollah do it? Well, the secret behind his success is crazier than we thought. Hezbollah, who also goes by Hasbik, was born in the small village of Akusha, Russia, which is inside the Republic of Dagestan. You probably have heard of Dagestan because it is the home of the UFC lightweight champion, Habib Nurmagomedov. Mixed martial arts has a huge part of Hezbollah's story, but we'll get to that. At some point, Hasbik moved to the largest city in Dagestan, Mahachkala. Although the reason for the move is unknown, it's possible he moved there to get access to better medical facilities to learn more information about his illness. Hezbollah has the facial features and body structure of a toddler, despite him being 20 years of age. It's likely caused I thought that was a little kid! I thought that was a baby, bro! What? He's 20 years old? Bro, not even little people look that young, bro. He's still like he's two years old. That man could speak in full sentences. He he can he can literally get a four hundred one k, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. By him being born with a growth hormone deficiency, where the brain's pituitary gland can't produce the necessary hormones for a growing human. However, technically, his condition is undiagnosed. Hezbollah said that doctors told him they did not know specifically what is wrong with him. Very little is known about Hezbollah's upbringing. No, it's not because I'm a lazy researcher, but if you understand more about his culture, the lack of information makes a lot of sense. Firstly, Dagestan as a whole is known for being a very poor republic of Russia. It's possible that his family had limited access to technology, computers, and smartphones growing up, so he wasn't uploading YouTube videos in 2008 like me. He did go to Islamic school for four years before he dropped out. He did not like the way his teachers treated him, and because of his condition, classmates were not always the nicest. Despite abandoning school, he still spent most of his days practicing his religion and spending time with the family, but that's pretty much all we know about his upbringing. As Americans, we often have this expectation that humans have to live this spectacular life. Life. We have to right. travel, experience different cultures and lifestyles, have lofty goals, make a lot of money, and constantly chase this better life that is sold to us on a daily basis. Uh, Many people from Dagestan and all over the world live almost the opposite. They have a job to help their community, they spend a lot of time practicing their religion, they spend a lot of time with family, and usually practice a sport, which for many Dagestanians, their sport of choice is wrestling, which has led to producing some of the most dangerous fighters in the world. Their region may be poor in terms of GDP, and other economic factors, however their culture is rich and their people are admirable. Their life is valued by their relationships with others and their dedication to God. 
Hezbollah says he never planned to be famous. It just kind of happened. It all started in June of 2020 when he posted a TikTok video of him eating his favorite fruit, strawberries. <laughs> He even sounds like a baby, bro. And he's 20? I'm dumbfounded. I'm I'm dumbfounded, bro. I'm what are what are the words? I'm perplexed. I'm flabbergasted. I am I am struck, obstructed, um, whatever, other words for, yeah, like, what? <laughs> okay, all right. You know, I, it makes sense why a 20-year-old that still looks like a baby would get famous. You got the cute factor on it, too, bro. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of sus, a grown man calling another grown man cute, but like, yeah. Yeah, man. I, I apologize. That That's a pause on me, but like, you know, still. You can't tell me this ain't kind of cute, though. <laughs> Alright, let's chill out, chill out, chill out, chill out, chill out. Don't rush me. Alright, let's get right back into the video, bro. This simple TikTok changed Hezbollah's life. The video went super viral on the Russian side of TikTok. People were saying he's cute, saying he looks somewhere between 6 and 40 years old, and questioning his condition. The mystery of Hezbollah began. Hezbollah continued to upload videos of him eating strawberries and saying this phrase. <laughs> which translates to, strawberries are bomb, to be honest. This phrase was turned into a TikTok meme. Just a couple of weeks later, the virality caught the attention of Mohammed Murtaza. That shit was so cringe, bro. <laughs> Y'all need to fucking stop, bro. That shit was Crazy as a Yes, owner of The Chef Cook's YouTube channel. Muhammad owns a restaurant called M Tokyo in Dagestan and invited Hasbeek to try some food and do an interview. This was the first time the internet got to learn a little bit about him. The video got well over 2 million views, and from there, Hasbullah realized he could start to finally profit from his condition. He started charging about 25,000 rubles, or $300, for a video collaboration. The next video, they made a chocolate fondue fountain, dipped strawberries and bananas, and did a taste test. The audience could not get enough of Hezbollah, so they continued to collaborate on food reviews and other Hezbollah lifestyle content for the next couple of months. Hasbeek was also contacted by Cubic, a children's department store in Mahachkala, to do a commercial. At the end of the commercial, he used his iconic catchphrase, but instead of strawberries are bomb, he said Cubic is bomb. Within a month, Hasbeek raised his rate to 100,000 rubles, or $1,200, and realized he could make an actual living from social media. He focused on growing his Instagram and TikTok following by reposting clips of the content he made with Muhammad. These clips would make the rounds on Russian social media algorithms. He was even featured on the news in Dagestan, where the hosts reacted to his viral videos. In just a couple of months, Hasbullah was a rising star in Dagestan. However, one man was about to take his fame to a whole new level. In late 2020, Hasbullah was discovered by a much larger Russian YouTuber, Azkab Tamev. Tamev is known as the Chechen Hulk because of his massive neck and body build. He is from the Republic of Chechnya, which is about 100 miles away from Mahachkala. Tamev was a mixed martial artist growing up and would make vlogs of his fitness journey and training sessions, each of them generating millions of views. He only had one professional fight in which he won, but he got so popular on YouTube through his fighting lifestyle videos that he became a Chechnyan star. Tamev saw the potential in Hezbollah, so he paid him for a video collaboration. The video was basically just a vlog where Tamev and his fans got to know Hasbeek, but there was one pivotal moment that changed everything. Basically, Tamev asked Hasbeek 
if he wants to hit the gym. He says, you're weak, right? Then Hezbollah says, no, I'm not, and punches him in the face. Tamev taunts him a little more and they have a laugh while Hasbeek throws some more hands. They left the restaurant and hit the gym. Hezbollah strapped on the boxing gloves and struck fear into the souls of anyone who dared to test him. The clips of Hezbollah fighting were beloved by the community. How could you not laugh at a tiny man punching someone with all his might, but it does zero damage? Tamev asked right again it's that cute factor bro the cute factor actually exists let's be honest let's stop stop playing around most of the celebrities that we see nowadays have that cute factor or that look good factor if you yeah but you know still cute factor let's be honest all right especially child celebrities that's pause chill out uh, but like, bro, come on, come on, it's the cute factor, let's be honest. Asked Hezbollah if he would like to fight anyone, and he said yes, but there is no opponent for him since he is so small. At that moment, a light bulb went off in Tamev's head. Like he started planning something that would change both of their lives forever. Hezbollah became a regular guest on Tamev's channel, as well as other Dagestanian YouTubers. He was a cheat code for millions of views. <laughs> <laughs> Hasbeek had already accumulated 500,000 followers on Instagram by the end of 2020 before anyone in the Western world knew about him. But the con 20 years old, bro. 20 years old and still look like a baby, bro. Sound like a baby, but can literally pay for his own house, own car, and own anything else he wants. That's crazy. But he can't enjoy those things that we can enjoy, like driving. I mean, I, I never said it before, but it's actually a privilege to drive, bro. I was recently in a car accident, right? This is not, not me going for no sympathy. You could, like, my last Apex video, if you guys watched that, I even told you guys I'm not doing it for no sympathy. I've just been gone because, you know, I've been going through some stuff throughout that accident. But it, it hurt, and it's really a privilege to drive. But then we take advantage of it and we act like that driving is is the worst thing ever. But literally, you're giving yourself freedom. There's more people out there that has to walk every day and they can't get to places that they want to go. But we take advantage of it and it's hard. It's hard, it's hard now after being in a car accident because it's like... I kind of don't want to drive, but I do need to drive to get places, especially where I'm at. But then, like, at the same time, it's, it's like, I can't wait to get back on the road. But, yeah, bro, like, you can't even get on roller coasters, bro. You can't even, you can, you can only enjoy the kid rides, bro. <laughs> that sucks, bro. That's, that's terrible. He probably can't even reproduce either, too. Yeah, that that's... It, it's cool, but it sucks at the same time, bro. That's crazy. Comments kept begging to see Hezbollah fight, and Tamev had the perfect opponent. On January 20th, 2021, a video that now has 11 million views was uploaded, announcing a fight between Hezbollah and Abdu Rozik. Abdu is a 19-year-old singer from Tajikistan, who appears to have the same genetic condition as Hezbollah, making him the perfect opponent. This video was their first press conference, where they are shouting at each other through a TV screen, stating how they were going to knock each other out. Tamev also became Hezbollah's manager at this point. He was using his network to help Hasbeek get more business and obviously sponsorship money. For all of 2021, Tamev- Okay, so let's say, okay, let's, let's go ahead and work through our finances because, you know, <laughs> all right, so let's say 
you keep 50% of that money and that goes to bills, house, and other other necessities. So that's about like you're keeping 25%. Let's just say that. So cut that half that you're keeping to yourself. Cut it in 25% and that goes to utilities, right? You have 25% of that money, let's say that you're making a million dollars. So you're still making $25,000, right? So you're, you're still keeping that $25,000. The other $25,000 is to bills and everything, right? Let's say if you put that other half and you give it to you give it to the research for your condition and see what's going on and why is it that why is this genetic this genetic thing is not is not you know yeah that's that's still a lot of money to put into research that's fifty thousand dollars especially if you get it from both fighters bro that's a million dollars. If you're getting if you're getting the profit from both fighters, that's a million dollars. That's wild, bro. It's wild, but it actually does make sense. Don't think that they're actually doing it, but you know. You know, it is what it is. Ev's most viewed videos were the ones that Hasbullah was in, which peaked when he finally got Hasbeek and Abdu in the same room together in May. This video has 19 million views, and millions of views on other social medias. This was the very first time the United States got introduced to Hezbollah. Since none of the videos had captions, Americans just saw two tiny humans that look like toddlers screaming at each other and ready to rip their heads off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh no oh my gosh man i i might have saw it i thought it was a joke bro at first i thought it was a joke bro i i might have like looked at it on my phone for a little bit like no nah, this is a joke and i put it back down i just <laughs> I'm like bro what <laughs> To Mev let everyone know that this fight was indeed scheduled and they planned on making it a legit televised bout. The ridiculousness of these two tiny men getting in the ring together was enough to keep people waiting. Their social media accounts were skyrocketing. This was about to be bigger than McGregor vs. Habib. The fight was being hyped up a lot by Tamev. He was posting his training clips. Meanwhile, Hezbollah was going super viral in the USA and getting a lot of new followers. Some of his most famous videos were the ones where he was imitating Habib. His USA audience still didn't know who Hasbeek was, so they gave him the nickname Mini Habib. It's tough to know how serious this fight was at this point. In the back of everyone's minds, they thought it had to be just a big joke. Hezbollah became a mastermind of social right. media at this point, fully understanding what types of things people wanted to see from him, entertaining millions with his antics. However, behind the scenes, things were not so good between Tamev and Hezbollah. Close friends of Hasbeek were saying that Tamev was taking advantage of him and mocking him publicly. On top of that, Hezbollah was demanding more money, which at this point, Tamev was paying him 100,000 rubles per video. 100,000 rubles? Hold on. Hold on, bro. Let's go ninjas. Right. I spelled that completely wrong. No, that's not what I meant. Uh. So, so one dollar is eighty one point 
38 rubles, right? Bro. Hold on. Hold on. Let's let's look at this, bro. So one hundred dollars. Yo. Yo. So he got he got paid a thousand dollars. Around 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 there, right? As Bola. Close friends of Hasbeek were saying that Tamev was taking advantage of him and mocking him publicly. On top of that, Hasbullah was demanding more money, which at this point, okay. Tamev was paying him 100,000 rubles per video. 100,000 rubles? So if it's, if it's $1,000 for this right here. Bro, he's paying him like $50, bro. What the fuck? Not even $50. He's probably giving him pennies and... They gave him one quarter, bro. That's crazy, bro. That's that's messed up, bro. What the fuck? One hundred thousand rubles for one dollar in the U.S. It's eighty one. It's eighty one point eight three dollars or rubles in Russia, bro. Yeah, bro. You need to find a new manager. Immediately, you need to find a new manager. Hasbeek said he was not being paid enough by Tamev, and because of the disagreement, they would no longer be working together. Tamev made a response video where he told his side of the story. Tamev says that Hezbollah wanted 300,000 rubles, or $3,700 per video. He also said that the people around Hezbollah are truly the ones who are deceiving him and taking advantage of him. A divide started to occur. Some viewers were saying Hezbollah was greedy, that he is ungrateful for all that Tamev did for him, and that Tamev is the one who made him so popular. Hezbollah supporters said the exact opposite. That most of Tamev. Honestly, you can't really call that greedy. You can call that. Well, you can call it self obtaining, I guess. He wants to he wants to be his own person, bro. He's 20 years old. And he has to be like catered around like a little child at all times. Look at you, bro. You literally have your arm around him like he's your son. He's a grown man. He wants to be his own person. Three three thousand dollars, which you're getting, you're probably getting more than three thousand dollars in the video. Honestly, you're probably getting like he's only he's only getting like a fraction of the money that you are receiving off of your videos that are monetized, and plus this event that you're getting both American and USA people in invested in. So it would probably be more about like. Let's estimate about one a million. No, divide the entertainment five hundred fifty thousand five hundred five hundred some thousand. You're getting five hundred some thousand. You can't spare like three three thousand dollars, four thousand dollars for this little dude, bro. For a video, actually, for a video. Bro, come on. It ain't that bad. And plus, you already got this much success off of your own channel. You just boosted your popularity a little bit more. And that is kind of messed up. But, like, at the same time, at the same time, what, what can you expect, bro? People are greedy. It is what it is. His popularity came from Hasbeek being featured on the channel, and that he deserved the money he demanded since Tamev could easily afford it. From here, it made a lot of people Bro, wonder if Hasbeek was race. being taken advantage of. After all, he is extremely vulnerable to abuse and mistreatment due to his size. Luckily, Hasbullah didn't even need his famous friend Tamev anymore, because he made a new super famous friend, Habib Namurgamedov. Habib and his men took Hasbeek under their hey, wing, and I okay. believe this was the key relationship for Hezbollah to make friends in high places. Habib is Russian and UFC royalty. He is the undefeated True. champion who has never had a controversy and is beloved by the world. Habib doesn't right. co-sign or uplift anyone other than the people that are closest to him. With Habib's support mm -hmm. and connections, Hezbollah was set for life. 
They brought Hezbollah to UFC 267 where Islam Makachev defeated Dan Hooker then celebrated with him in the ring. He even got into an altercation with Abdu Rozik while he was there. As far as Hasbeek's fight with Abdu, it was now October. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious, bro. It's hilarious seeing little kids fight, bro. I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, it's, out of, it's out of character. That's out of line. October 2021, and nothing really progressed. Tamev posted screenshots of a private DM with Dana White, where Dana said he was interested in making their bout official with the UFC. However, Hezbollah later confirmed that this was a fake DM. There was no contract, and this was just a troll from Tamev. Make sure you're oh. drinking water. Hasbeek just kept posting hilarious memes of himself. People doubted that it was actually him running his own page, but it was. He knows that he is a meme. He knows that people love to see him act like a menace, and the more ridiculous, the better. He would jump on trending moments like a picture of him defeating Deontay Wilder, or he would just find himself making the perfect face that would fit the reaction of any weird thing you saw on Twitter. His memes got the attention of Caleb Presley from Barstool Sports, who took his USA fame to new heights. You ever seen the movie? Cars? I'm gonna take a my pool. You too big for cartoons? I can say I was also there. I'm an adult. I like cars, the movie. Because that's what my thing is also. Oh! Hezbollah strikes love and fear through me at the same time. It's hard to put into words why Hezbollah is so loved. He is just packed with charisma and positivity in his tiny body. I think adults just naturally look at children and see bliss, naivety, and almost feel jealous of their youth. Hezbollah has that, but he's a fully grown adult, even though right. some people, like Mike Tyson, treat him like a toddler. <laughs> that clip is hard to watch. If it isn't obvious, Hezbollah hates being treated like a toddler. But him running around doing completely normal things like driving a car, laughing, smiling, running, existing, are just interesting to us. He represents the innocence and joy we all had at one point. Plus, his life goals are very humble. I could so easy business. It's a lot of money, thank you very much for <laughs> Hasbeek did in fact start a booming business. His popularity mm -hmm. and affiliation with Habib landed him a five-year contract with the UFC. Hasbullah leaned into the- You see, bro? You see, bro? Bro, like, he's bigger than yourself sometimes, man. He opened his own business, you know? I don't know what he's doing with the money of the business that he has, right? You know, he's he's a part of the UFC, obviously. But then, like, you know, sometimes when you have conditions as this kid or this grown-ass man, you know, it may be tough. It may be tough of what we have now, right? But, but, listen, listen to me. Carefully. This is a grown ass man that looks like a two year old little boy. Right? Okay. Listen, listening. He can't even shop with the regular clothes that we have, right? Listen. Listening, I'm gonna get to my point. Opening his own business. I'm guessing he's about like 24, 25 years old. Right? 24, 25. Right? Okay. Literally can put in the funding to his research of his disease. To the research of his disease literally can help save the planet unlike majority of people like literally i'm going to react to another video right after this it's going to be about <clears throat> sadly another another influencer which really shouldn't be an influencer no more um you should call them real models because that's literally what they are if you're on the internet and people there's thousands or millions of people looking up to you. You are no longer just an influencer. You are a role model. That's my philosophy. You should be looking to save humankind. 
because right now we are in the shitter. We are literally in the shitter. <laughs> Let's be honest. <clears throat> I'll be honest, and this is me, this is truthfully speaking. I fuck with this little, this little dude, bro. I fuck with this little dude. Let's continue, the man. Idea let's that let's he go to finish this up. Since that would get more attention. However, he says he doesn't like fighting. Despite him going viral for constantly hitting and punching people, that's just what they demand from him. Most people ask Hezbollah if he can hit them. He doesn't actually want to do it. We would later find out that he is just an ambassador for the UFC brand. So he will go to events and help promote, but he's not going to fight. How much he okay. made from this deal is still unclear but Dana White probably paid him more than he pays his fighters. Conor McGregor even chimed True. in with how he feels about Hezbollah. He was pretty much the first person to ever say anything negative about him, which seemed incredibly out of pocket, but we wouldn't expect much different from the former champion and rival to Habib. Plus, this allowed True. Hasbeek to engage in a hilarious ongoing beef with Conor for all of our entertainment. As far as other business ventures, we do know he has an NFT project, which we all know aren't technically scams, but they always seem to fall short of what they promise, as the world has no idea no how NFTs shit, are going to provide any real value to our lives. He also I'm I'm all I'm all for the supporting and all that. Like your merch, your businesses, I'm all into supporting that, right? But as soon as you hit me with that join the NFT bro. You gotta be fucking kidding me, bro. Don't don't buy it into that shit, bro. This is coming from me. I never been scammed. Well, maybe maybe not with crypto, but I have been scammed before. But like, I I saw through the crypto scam already since the first thing, bro. Like, yeah, don't don't buy into that shit. I'm all into supporting, support the merch, support the business, support support the person itself. But do not buy into crypto you will get scammed most likely bro just if you don't trust me just look at look at i don't know look at logan paul and look at who else look at logan paul look at uh aiden ross and look at what happened to what's the dude name what's the dude name I forgot. There's a whole bunch of influencers. Look at FaZe, bro. FaZe is a whole corporation. They had a crypto scam, bro. Let's be honest, bro. Don't buy into that shit. Sells merchandise and gets paid for interviews and collaborations. I don't think Hasbulla is filthy rich by any means, but he's probably doing just fine. His travel expenses sure. are paid by the people he organizes collaborations with, and he says a lot of the nice things he owns are actually gifts from other people as gifting is very common amongst rich people in other cultures. His deal with the UFC Words. also allowed the Nelk boys to secure an interview with him, because Hezbollah does not work with just anyone. Not because he's closed-minded, but because he doesn't really know who would be worth his time. For example, he didn't know nor care to meet Drake. You've talked to Drake on Instagram, Hezbollah? And what are they messaging you? What did Drake say to you on Instagram? You left Drake on red? <laughs> wow. Hasbeek truly does not fancy yeah. anyone. He looks up to God and that's it. Which makes him even more special because people think he is this kid in the candy store just happy to be chauffeured around the world. But he would be perfectly content in his small home in Dagestan relaxing with his family. He constantly says his whole purpose of making money is to give it away to others who are in need. His values are centered around his family and friends. But just like anyone else, if you are given the opportunity to travel the world, experience all these exciting adventures just because people want to talk to you, who wouldn't capitalize on that? The Nelk Boys also allowed us to see the best side of Hezbollah. He showed them around his country and gave them an insight to who he really is. Then the Nelk Boys invited him to the USA and gave him some incredible memories. These videos felt very personal. Of course, we got some iconic Hasbulla antics, but it felt like we were experiencing a deeper insight to his life that just made fans love him even more. But sadly, just when the world thought Hasbulla could do no wrong, he slipped up. And one video changed Hasbulla's reputation forever. Hasbeek decided to film him. All right, before we get into that, please, okay? Before we get into that, we're gonna, we're gonna stop right here. Okay, we're gonna stop right here on this little man, right? Okay, okay, okay. Fucking love his philosophy. Okay, let's let's be honest. I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna be perfectly honest. I love this this little dude's philosophy. Um, yeah, help people, help people. Keep that in mind. 
I'm not trying to be this, like, this person, this, like, you know. Yeah, I'm not trying to be, like, do exactly what he's doing. No, that's, that's not the person I am. Um, like, in majority of the Asian cultures, this dude would be a Buddhist, bro. He would be literally Buddha, bro. <laughs> that's Buddha right there, bro. But, mm. Slipped up, and one video changed Hasbulla's reputation forever. Hasbeek decided to film himself disciplining his cat, which consisted of him tugging on its ear and hitting it on the top of the cat's head. One shot with a closed fist and one open hand slap. And the cat also looks like it's afraid of Hasbulla. The internet got set on fire. His comment sections are flooded with him being called an abuser, a terrible person, and that he doesn't deserve to have custody of his cat. Hasbeek responded with this video. <laughs> where he says he lightly disciplined it and that he loves his cat more than anyone and he thinks people are overreacting. A few days later, he's receiving so much hate from the internet that he said he is considering giving up his animal. Basically, everyone agrees that filming himself hitting the cat was definitely weird and totally unnecessary, but some people were making it seem like he was going to be on Netflix's Don't Fuck With Cats Part 2. Cats are mostly gentle creatures who probably don't need to be disciplined, and even if they did, hitting them is not the solution. Because of this, Hasbulla found out that in the Western world and on social media, one mistake can define how the world sees you forever. Some people saw the video of the cat, and now they think he spends all of his free time abusing animals. He didn't apologize, and because he didn't apologize, and he just kind of told his side of the story, most people didn't accept it, and it kind of made it even worse for him. At the same time, Hezbollah likely doesn't care how the world sees him. He doesn't have the same values or morals that people in the West Uh, if you're an influencer, again, I'm gonna stop saying influencer, if you're a role model, um, like, it doesn't matter what you say or what you do, bro. Even if you come out with the most harmful apologies, somebody's going to try to twist it and turn it and make you seem worse than what you actually are. We are, again, in the shitter as a human species. As, as a species altogether, bro. We are in the shitter. And it's like, you know, we don't, we don't ever think about our actions like that sometimes. But then, like, whenever we do... It's always, oh, let me make this apology or, oh, let me, let me think of, let me do this. Let me do that. Let me try to get in the eyes of my community. Let me try to do this. Let me, you know, you know, like they try to, they try to become something they're not just because of the money and the fame that they're getting. But that's not really the person that they are. They're really just fake on the inside. They're, what they did is how they truly are. I don't. I don't. I don't really. I don't really care about him disciplining his cat. Right. I don't really care too much about it because whatever you do on your own personal time is what you do, right? But things like that, like filming of what you do in home, your home life, like hitting your cat or your pets hitting your pets or like disciplining your pets your children uh you like what you spend money on unless it's something that's gonna that you're trying to tell your community about what you spent your money on like let's say if i bought a new pc and i was like you know look look at the new pc i bought and like look i bought a new pc and we're gonna go start we're gonna start streaming on twitch more which is my ultimate goal, but like, um, yeah, it's like, it's like we see a whole lot of rise and falls nowadays more than ever, but it just doesn't matter to anybody. As long as you got a big number right next to your name, it doesn't matter. You can be a nobody and be your cat to put it on the internet and nobody will care. But as soon as you're a big influencer, a big role model, someone that people look up to, someone that people keep tabs on, then whatever you do is the worst thing possible. It's the, it's the worst ever. And 
Yeah. It's crazy. Western world do. He likely doesn't fear being cancelled, nor is he going to let the masses judge him. He has been attacked his whole life, and he knows at the end, God is the only one whose judgment matters. True. The real secret to Hezbollah's success is knowing that if he lost everything and had to live the rest of his life in the mountains of Dagestan with his family, he probably wouldn't care. Damn, bro. Damn, bro. Yep. So, that was a lot to take in, a lot to unpack, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. But uh, I do appreciate all you guys. Well, if you guys watch the video, if you guys don't watch the video, uh, you know, all that other good stuff. Appreciate if you guys leave a like. Probably already put the edit in there for the like, subscribe, and all that other stuff. Um, I will leave my socials down in the description if you guys want to follow, if you do feel inclined to. But with that said, it's been your boy Zill Jackson. Again, I don't need no sympathy about the whole car accident thing. Please do not, do not send me no prayers. I, I hate to feel like I'm hopeless, okay? That's not the person I am. But I do appreciate it if you guys do at the same time. Um, with that said, you guys, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Peace. Stay safe.